In this lesson, we'll learn how to customize views, toolbars, and save workspaces. So let's say this is your first time opening up Toon Boom Harmony. Well, the arrangement of the various toolbars, views, and just the overall workspace will look exactly like what you see here by default. So we're going to start to familiarize ourselves with these different elements of the interface and begin to learn how to customize them to really suit the needs of whatever project you might be working on. So let's start with views. A view is basically any area of the interface that has this red border outlining it, which basically signifies that that particular view is active. So for example, we're currently in the camera view. It's active because we have this red border around it, which basically means we could be actively engaged in using the different tools and features that accompany the camera view. Now if we come over here to the left where it says Tool Properties, and let's say I just click right here. Well now that red border surrounds the Tool Properties view. So this view is now active and we would be working within it. To further demonstrate, I could come down here and click where we have the color view, and then down here at the bottom where we have the timeline view. As you jump between these views, you're going to see, again, that red border outlining the, those particular views, signifying that you're working within that view. Now for some of these views, you may have noticed that there are more than one tab, with the exception of the timeline view. So there's more than one tab. So like, for example, the camera view, we have the camera view tab, but then next to it, there's a suppressed tab titled drawing. If we click on that, we're now in the drawing view. So you can tab together as many views as you want. So the way that you would do this is you would click on this plus button that you'll see in the upper right corner of a particular view. So we can see that in these other views that we've highlighted. You would click on that, and on the drop-down menu, you can see all these different views that you want to add. So let's say we want to add the node view and the perspective view and maybe the side view. And we'll be talking about these other views later on. So now they're all tabbed together in this, this area of the interface. Now if you want to remove a view from the interface with its particular tab selected, you would click the X button and you can remove it. So even coming down over here where we have the color view, we also have a node view tabbed. You would click on that X right there, and it's gone. Now, if you're in a situation where you have a view that's just by itself, which is what we now have for the color view, and you click on the X, it's now gone, and the views around that are going to adjust to occupy that freed up real estate, as you can see now with the tool properties view being expanded down. So let's say you have a view that's tabbed with um, some views, other views, and you want to undock it and tab it with some different views in another part of the interface. So we'll demonstrate this with the node view. So I'm just clicking on the tab and dragging it out. And while still holding without releasing, you can see this little blue, slightly transparent box that's attached to the cursor. The shape of this box will dictate where this view is going to exist before you release. So let's say we want to tab it. I would hover over these tabs over here. Notice how the shape of that box changes. It conforms just to those tabs. So if I release, it's now tabbed along with the tool properties view and the library view. So let's say we want to place this view instead in between views. So again, I would grab that tab, just clicking on it, dragging out. And this time I would, I can hover along the edge of a view. So I'm just kind of hovering along the edge of these different views. Notice how that blue transparent box changes shape. It's basically telling me that's the amount of real estate that that particular view is going to occupy if I release and place it there. So maybe I want to place it in between the library view and the timeline view right here. So I'll release and there the node view sits by itself. Now you can also take a view, and let's say you just want it to be its own independent window. Maybe you have a second monitor. I do this all the time with the node view because it can, it can become very involved. I can have a lot of nodes, and I just want to be able to see everything. So you can take that tab again, 
and this time just kind of pulling it off by itself to where it's not hovering over any tabs or the edge of a view and just release. It's now its own window and then you can drag that over to another monitor if you want. Okay. All right. Very cool. So let's talk about resizing views. So let's say you're happy with the placement of views, how they're tabbed, but you just want to resize some different ones. So let's say for the timeline view, I just want it to be a little bit larger. While well, I'm clicking in between the view, if you kind of hover in between views here, notice how those areas highlight kind of a blue color and your cursor changes. So I'm just clicking in between a view and dragging up in this case for the timeline view and maybe over for the drawing view. So adjusting the amount of real estate, the size of these particular views. So for the timeline view, you may want to see some more of the layers that you have here, just more of the cells that are probably accompany those layers. So let's say you're happy with basically the placement, the size of all these views, and you're working, and you just for a moment want to focus on just one view, and you just want to be able to expand it out and just see everything only within it. I do this a lot with the timeline view, especially if I have a really big scene and a lot of layers I'm working with. So that's where these little arrows in between views come in handy. The, basically these arrows that are pointing opposite of one another allow you to expand and contract views. So I could click on this up arrow. It expands out the timeline view to where I only see it. And I could click the down arrow to expand it back down. Or the drawing view, for example. I could click on this down arrow. It'll expand out the drawing view in that direction. And then this arrow right here pointing towards the right. I could click that and it expands it out like that. So take a little bit of time um, to basically work with these views and start to customize the interface to really suit the needs of whatever project you're working on. Anything that'll really make the experience um, very fluid for you so that you're not having to comb through a lot of tabbed views, a lot of views that you're probably not using, and you're able to get to what you need to quickly and easily. Okay. Um, so one final thing about views, ag again, you have that red border that signifies that a view is active. If you want to change the color of it for whatever reason, go to edit, preferences, general, and where it says colors, current view border, you could click on that and you could change it to whatever color you want. So let's shift gears and talk about toolbars. So we have all these different toolbars here. You can add and remove toolbars and move them around. So if we wanted to add some toolbars or remove them, you can go to Windows, Toolbars, and then on this flyout menu, you can see all these different toolbars. The ones that have check marks next to them are toolbars that have already been added to the interface. So Advanced Animation, for example, right here. It's checkmarked, and that's that toolbar right up here. If for whatever reason we wanted to remove it, click on it again, and it's gone. Okay. If we wanted to add it back, just click on it. Let's say we want to add the onion skin toolbar right there, and it's been added to our interface. So once you, you've added toolbars that you want to use and you've removed the ones that you don't want to use, you can start to move them around and really customize your workspace. So let's say I want to take the tools toolbar over here and I want to move it up here at the top. Well, each of these toolbars has this little vertical gray block at the head. So you can take this, you'll see how your cursor changes. You can grab it and you can begin to kind of restack and reorder your toolbars um, in a way that really suits your needs. So I'm just kind of moving the onion skin toolbar up there. Now, here's a good example. We have the advanced animation toolbar and the onion skin toolbar. And let's say I move the onion skin toolbar towards the left, covering up a majority of the advanced animation toolbar. I'm moving these toolbars around to where I kind of want them all up here on kind of the same row, perhaps, something like that. And you start to push them over. You're pushing, you're pushing toolbars kind of squeezing them over, overlapping on some of them. When you do that, you'll see these little arrows. So for the advanced animation toolbar, I can't see all of the tools, but if I click on this little arrow, it expands out, and now I can see the remaining tools in that toolbar in this little flyout area so that I can easily choose them. So it really kind of depends on um, kind of how you want to work, how you want to set up your interface. Again, something that really suits the needs of the project you're 
focusing on, okay? So now let's say you spent a lot of time customizing your entire workspace and you want to save it because if you close it out, you're going to lose all of that when it opens back up. So this is where you can go to Windows, Workspace, and then you can choose Save Workspace, which would save over the current workspace that you just customized, or you can choose Save Workspace as to save a new workspace, okay? So I would choose, in this case, Save Workspace as, you could call it Custom, whatever you want to call it, and click OK. And this one actually already exists. I've already kind of created a custom workspace. So in this case, what I probably want to go ahead and do is I'll just title it differently. I can just call this one, I'll call it custom one or custom two. How about that? And we'll click OK. All right, so now we go to Windows Workspace and then Workspace right here in that flyout menu. And here you can see I have some different custom workspaces that I've created. Custom, custom two, custom three. And so I can jump in between any of these workspaces that I've, I've saved. So let's say I want to choose Custom 3. So now I'm in the Custom 3 workspace. Or I can go ahead and check out some of these default workspaces that, are, that come with uh, Toon Boom Harmony. Maybe I want to check out, say, scripting. So here you can see a dramatically different workspace that basically caters to someone that just wants to focus on scripting in Harmony. Now let's go up to Windows Workspace again, and we're going to go to Workspace Manager. All right. And so we have two areas here of this Workspace Manager dialog. We have Available Workspaces and then the Workspace Manager Toolbar, which is this toolbar right up here. So really quickly, if you don't see the Workspace Toolbar up here, go to Windows toolbars and make sure you have workspace checked. Okay, so going back to the workspace manager. And so right here are the, the different workspaces that are created. So you could select one, okay, say like custom three. Okay, and if you no longer want custom three, you could delete it. So it's selected right there and click on this minus and it's gone. Okay. And then you could say, take custom, and let's say you want to duplicate that. Okay, so you could hit that plus right there, and it'll duplicate it, and it's now called custom two. But we already have a custom two, so we don't want to get confused. So we could take that custom two, select it, and rename it, and we could call it custom, or we could call it animate, or whatever, whatever we want, something different. How about we call it Animate 1, okay, just for demonstration purposes. Okay, and so now you could go into that, select that workspace later on and modify it and customize it even further, okay? So now if we go back to Windows, Workspace, and then Workspace again, there's Animate 1 right there that I just created, okay? Now let's talk about the Workspace Toolbar. The Workspace Toolbar is going to show all the workspaces that you've added to that Toolbar section of the Workspace Manager dialog. So notice how Animate 1 isn't showing up in there. Notice how Custom isn't showing up in there. Okay, we're only seeing Custom 2. So let's say the Workspace Toolbar is great to quickly jump to and switch workspaces. So let's say you want to add those in there. So you could go to Window, Workspace, Workspace Manager, click on Animate 1, and just place it over there. And you can even put Custom and place it over onto the Toolbar section just by clicking on this little arrow right there. If there are any that you want to pull out, like say you just want to pull out Hand Drawn, you could just click on this arrow right here pointing to the left, and it puts it back um, over here. Of course, if you want to add it back, you can. You can also adjust the stacking as well. Click OK, and now all that's reflected over here in the Workspace toolbar. Okay. So what I'm going to go actually go ahead and do is just I'm going to revert back to just the default workspace. And this is pretty much the arrangement that we're going to be using for this course. But hopefully this gives you an idea as to just where everything is at 
just to begin with and how you can begin to really customize the interface to really suit the needs of whatever project you're working on. So in our next lesson, we're going to start coming over here to the Tools toolbar, and we're going to begin our, our focus on some of the drawing tools, starting with the Pencil tool. So stick around, and we'll focus on that in the next lesson.